Savia. I said, writing to Miss Pankhurst, if it was necessary to go to prison in order to win the vote, I was ready. The demonstrators desired to have the question of votes for women put in the House to the Prime Minister. The whip went to the Prime Minister, who said it was impossible. Then the smouldering fire burst into a flame. Miss Gawthorpe of Leeds jumped up. Men who have votes and women who have no votes. We women are here this afternoon to protest against this government, which refuses to give us any hope of having women's enfranchisement during this session. All right, all right. <laughs> Not long ago, she was a teacher under the Leeds School Board. She has thrown herself, heart and soul, first into socialism and secondly into the emancipation of women. Miss Gawthorpe is a petite young woman of some 25 years, rather good looking, but with a very voluble tongue. We were warned we must find surety for £10 or go to prison for two months. <laughs> we chose prison. She has broken the record in campaigning during the last few months, from Stepney to Rutland, from Rutland to Jarrow, from Jarrow She to has carried the Votes for Women banner without a day's rest between one election and another. Men say that women can talk. That's right, dear. <laughs> well, they are going to talk and talk and get other women to talk. And then perhaps men will give us a vote. Go back to your mother, dance some songs. Take no notice. It is only our friends throwing the naughty ones out. <laughs> All who have ever heard her speak realise her power over great audiences is something to be wondered at. The women of London were exhorted to go to Hyde Park. Seven processions have been arranged. The women have been recommended to wear white frocks, adorned with the colours purple, green and white. Presiding over the second platform will be Miss Mary Gawthorpe. At present, she is working against Mr Churchill. The whole vast space that one could see was covered with people. One million tickets have been issued by the Women's Social and Political Union. We want men to see this fight is not being waged in the interests of women as against men, but it is for their welfare, through the welfare of their wives, daughters, mothers and sisters that we stand. I'm going to be a prison warden, Emily. What are you being when you grow up? Me? Why, Miss Garthorpe? If Mother lets me. Votes for women! Votes for women! We are very sorry indeed to hear that Miss Mary Gawthorpe remains seriously ill. Miss Gawthorpe has poured out her strength in such lavish service that she probably gave herself a poor chance of recovering from a blow received some years ago. There never was a gayer, sweeter, keener fighter than Mary Gawthorpe, and we hope she will soon recover. Oh, 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 oh. It seems we have not done enough. I mean to do more. I, Leonora Cohen, am a militant, and I should not like anyone to think otherwise. We had what was called the Dickinson Amendment. We were going to have a partial property qualification vote for women. That is, women over 30 with a property qualification, and we were willing to accept that. We might as well have half a loaf and get the rest afterwards. To back it up, we had a deputation to Lloyd George and Sir Edward Grey, and we put a case for the working women all over the United Kingdom, why they wanted the vote, and I put the case for the tailoresses. And Lloyd George replied that he was that impressed with the deputation. I only wish I could put it on the floor of the house. We thought then we had nothing to do but wait for a measure of partial votes for women. Instead of that, news came to Mrs Pankhurst. We have been tricked. Therefore, militancy will restart at once. I bought a guide to London. I went through all the places of amusement until I came to the Tees. Tower of London. That's it. That's the one. 
Mrs Morrison helped me all she could. I had to make a bag to tie around my waist for a hammer and two iron bars, which were so heavy. She took me to Kensington High Street Underground and told me then to get out at Mark Lane. When I got to Mark Lane, I was so nervous I couldn't get up and just absolutely all the use had gone out of my legs and I went all round again. Then I was suddenly electrified with the thought that they might be closing at noon, so I staggered out of the train. I saw a crocodile of students with their teachers and I joined on to them and I followed them all the way, stuck to them like glue, even to the jewel house. There were two yeomen and all the crowd and our instructions were never to hurt anybody. We could then do what we liked with our own life, but never injure anybody. I had to weave in and out to get to a place where I should be able to throw the missile over the heads of them. The police came. The beef-eaters stayed. They fell on me and said, What have you done this for? My message is on the parcel. Jewel House, Tower of London. My protest to the government for its refusal to enfranchise women but continues to torture women prisoners. Deeds, not words. Leonora Cohen. These women, who do and dare so much, command respect as much by their practical way of tackling immense difficulties as by their devotion to the cause. Perhaps that is how they succeed in conveying the impression that theirs is the winning game.